Because his girlfriend had become unusually distant, he deliberately spilled beer on her. Thinking it was an accident, she got up to change her clothes, but as soon as she left, he quickly grabbed her unlocked phone, pulled out a card reader from his pocket, and copied all her data. His nerves tightened as he scrolled through her chat history with her best friend. After landing a job at a state-owned enterprise, her friend had been encouraging her to find someone better. The friend even said she knew a handsome guy who owned a company and offered to introduce them if she was interested. What started his innocent girl talk took a dark turn when he noticed his girlfriend's hesitant but not entirely dismissive attitude, making him realize he had been betrayed. His possessiveness surged. When they got home, he embraced her while she was folding clothes then suddenly pushed her onto the bed. He said, it's fine, we're almost married anyway, but she still shoved him away with all her strength. He wanted to confront her, but a mere chat log wasn't enough proof. So, he swallowed his words, put on his pants, and sulkily crawled into bed. He gave no response to her attempt at reconciliation, and little did he know that the next day, another man would enter her life, while she was resting her head on her desk. A man brought her a coffee, I saw you come back empty-handed from the vending machine, so I guessed you didn't have any coins, he said. She felt a wave of embarrassment but still mentioned that it was her favorite coffee. The man then pulled out another bottle from his pocket, saying, I drink this to stay alert at work too, seems like we have similar tastes. During their conversation, she learned he was an overseas returnee who not only owned an apartment in Seoul but also had an annual salary of 40 million won. Impressed by his success, she couldn't help but compliment him, but then, she suddenly froze. Her boyfriend had unexpectedly shown up at her workplace to pick her up. She turned to glance at the man she had just met. Then, she ran to her boyfriend. When he asked who that man was, she casually replied, just a colleague, but on the drive home, he couldn't hold back his suspicions. He questioned her about flirting with the guy and even giving him her phone number. She explained that the man had tried to get close to her by offering her coffee, but she wasn't interested in him at all. However, her boyfriend didn't believe a word of it, shouting and accusing her relentlessly, unable to bear being wrongly accused by the man she loved. She stormed out of the car in anger. The next day, realizing his mistake, the man humbled himself, begging for her forgiveness and promising a romantic candle at dinner that evening. He was so nervous about the possibility of her not forgiving him that he kept biting his fingers anxiously, to the point where he didn't even notice when he started to bleed. But instead of accepting his apology, she told him she had dinner plans with colleagues that night. His feelings of remorse instantly evaporated, replaced by a burning fury. After work, he saw her laughing and chatting with the same man from yesterday. And worse, the man even placed a hand on her back. The boyfriend, hiding nearby, witnessed it all, his heart filling with rage and pain. He followed them to the apartment building and waited until the lights went out, planning to storm in and catch them red-handed. But he suddenly stopped in his tracks, recalling the advice given to him by the relationship manager. He used to trust his girlfriend completely until he attended his best friend's wedding which made him rethink his relationship. At the wedding, he noticed his friend was so nervous he started vomiting, and he jokingly mocked him for being inexperienced. But his friend responded, saying it wasn't nerves this whole idea of marriage was making him sick to his stomach. Just as he was puzzled, his buddy said, you two should probably get married soon, right? But I suggest you consult someone before setting a date. He continued, there are many companies now that specialize in solving marriage issues. They say marriage makes people more realistic, so you need to brace yourself. However, he didn't quite understand his friend's point. That's when he noticed a business card tucked into the picture frame it was from one of those consultation companies his friend had mentioned. Curious. He decided to check it out. The relationship manager told him that marriage follows a hierarchy. Ever since your girlfriend started working for a state-owned company, your standing in the relationship has been flipped. He thought it was a place to get advice on wedding planning, but instead, the consultant started saying things that seemed to undermine his relationship with his girlfriend. He turned to leave, but the consultant warned, if you walk out now, your marriage will be doomed. The consultant then added, if you bring up marriage, your girlfriend will steer the conversation toward buying a house and demand something impossible, like asking your parents to sell their old home and buy a new one in Seoul. 
Skeptical but curious, the man asked his girlfriend about marriage. To his surprise, she really did bring up the issue of buying a house and pressured him to have. His parents sell their old home to pay for a new one in Seoul for their future, he suggested. Let's set a wedding date. I'll arrange a fancy dinner with both sets of parents next week to discuss it. But his girlfriend suddenly got nervous and asked why he was in such a rush. She mentioned that many of her friends are still enjoying the freedom of not being married, saying, you know. I'm someone who loves my freedom too. At that moment, he realized that her attitude toward marriage had completely changed since she started working for the state-owned company. She used to be the one eager to get married. But now, as the consultant predicted, she was dodging the topic whenever he brought up a specific date. Feeling anxious, he asked the consultant how to turn things around. The consultant simply replied, Don't ask questions, just do as I say, and I promise you'll walk into marriage together. She then handed the man a card reader, which led to the moment when the man accessed his girlfriend's phone information. Although he knew she was in another man's room, he had to follow the consultant's instructions and left the place. Fuming, at dawn, the girl hurriedly dressed, trying to leave. But her male colleague told her it was still early and grabbed her hand. Wanting to relive the night's pleasures, she quickly ran to the bathroom, using the excuse of needing to go. There, she turned on the faucet, realizing she had gone too far. Seeing dozens of missed calls on her phone, she nervously sent a text to her boyfriend. By noon, she hadn't heard back, so she decided to call him herself. She started by saying, you didn't reply to my message. So I got worried and called you, she sweetly added. I'll make sure to answer your calls right away from now on. Her boyfriend, however, responded coldly. I'm in a meeting, and quickly hung up. The girl had no idea that her boyfriend had been secretly following her the night before. Watching as she spent time with another man, he stayed there until 2 or 3 a.m. Heartbroken, before finally leaving, later, she vented to her best friend about how her boyfriend's constant talk of marriage was stressing her out. To her surprise, her friend immediately urged her to break up with him, saying, You're a full-time employee at a state-owned enterprise now. You can easily find someone better. The girl angrily replied, We're not at that point yet. As my best friend, you should know I was just talking. But just as she was explaining that she still loved her boyfriend, the man from last night sent her a text, complaining that she left without tasting the breakfast he made and asking if she was free to go hiking with him the next day. She showed the text to her best friend, hoping for advice. Her friend encouraged her, you should definitely go. That way, you can understand his feelings and decide between him and your boyfriend. Taking her friend's advice, she went to meet the man as planned. The man said, if you think I'm rushing things, I apologize. The girl responded, I was just drunk that night. I'm not usually like that. As they were talking, she tripped on a rock, and her phone fell to the ground, causing a sweet photo of her and her boyfriend to slip out. Panicking, she tried to hide the picture, but it was too late he had already seen it. Realizing there was no turning back, she decided to go all in. With a confident smile, she told him, I'll break up with my boyfriend right away. The man replied, then today will be the start of our relationship. To celebrate the moment, he suggested they take a photo together at a beautiful scenic spot. He led her to the edge of a cliff, where she felt like the happiest woman in the world. Just as they officially confirmed their relationship, he turned to show her the photo he had taken, but accidentally knocked her off the cliff. Luckily, the man reacted quickly and managed to grab his soon-to-be girlfriend's hand just as she slipped. He kept encouraging her to trust him, but because she was wearing silk gloves, she eventually slipped and fell off the steep cliff. Panicking, the man let out gut-wrenching screams as he watched her fall. <laughs> the girl survived, but she suffered a broken tibia and ended up in the hospital. Even after she recovered, she would never walk the same way again. As she lay in the hospital, guilt consumed her as she looked at her boyfriend, who stayed by her side without complaint. She cried, saying, I was just confused and made a terrible mistake. I swear I'll never do something like this again. Her boyfriend said to her, You've been through so much. You worked odd jobs to pay for your own tutoring fees because you didn't want to burden me. I can forgive this mistake I understand. But as he held her close, he flashed a sinister smile she couldn't see. Not long after, the man was promoted to department head, an attractive female co-worker. Upon seeing his name on the promotion list, 
began to flirt with him, constantly acting cute and playful around him, sensing an alluring vibe. The man discreetly put away the photo of his girlfriend. From that day on, the female co-worker kept hinting at her intentions during meetings, and even more openly while they worked together. She made it clear she was interested in him, without bothering to hide her motives. Meanwhile, things were far worse for his girlfriend, who was still in the hospital, struggling with her mobility. She even fell while trying to go to the bathroom, and when she texted her boyfriend, he rarely responded. To make matters worse, she received a letter from her company informing her that she had been fired. Just when she felt utterly hopeless, fate took an unexpected turn. One day, she found a business card on her hospital bed. It was from a relationship consultant who specialized in resolving marriage issues. Intrigued. She set up a meeting, the consultant told her. Marriage is about reality. Everyone seeks a partner who matches their level. So you can't blame your boyfriend for his actions. If you're not confident in raising your own status, then you can bring him down to your level. That's what I specialize in. What the girl didn't know was that her current predicament was orchestrated by her boyfriend, who had once hired this very same consultant. In the end, the man betrayed their love, but as he was lost in his newfound arrogance, karma struck. When he woke up, he found himself in an abandoned house, staring into a mirror. He saw his reflection a man with only one eye and let out agonized screams, and so, he returned to his girlfriend's side. He held her tightly in his arms as she sat in her wheelchair. And in that moment, they both knew they had found the person they wanted to spend the rest of their lives with. Their wedding went on as planned. The bride was stunningly beautiful. Even as she sat in her wheelchair, the groom looked dashing and handsome. And if you didn't look closely, you might not even notice anything was wrong with his eye. <laughs> The man intended to leave, but little did he know, his flirty assistant had a trick up her sleeve. In a sweet yet mocking tone, she said, You scumbag, how could you leave a woman alone at a hotel overnight? Then she added, If you walk out now, I'll call your wife right away. At that moment, the man felt like his Achilles heel had been struck, and he had no choice but to sit back down obediently. The assistant smugly scrolled through her phone, unaware that the man had quietly picked up a pen from the table. As she continued to berate him, the man who was her department head suddenly caved in. He then said, Wait here for me. I'll go home first and deal with that fierce tigress. However, once he got into the taxi, the man was still unwilling to give up. He told his wife that he couldn't get a cab and would have to spend the night at a bathhouse. But unexpectedly, his wife's furious roar came through the phone, forcing him to reluctantly say he'd keep trying to get a ride. What the man didn't anticipate was that the taxi driver saw right through his lies. The driver said, We men work our butts off to earn money, and wives like that shouldn't meddle in our business, for a woman who doesn't behave. You should give her a good beating when you get home. With that, the driver enthusiastically raised his fist in the air, realizing he was dealing with a hot-tempered guy. The man started to worry, but what came next terrified him even more. He found a leather bag under the front seat, and out of curiosity, he opened it. To his horror, inside the bag was an ID card stained with blood, and the person in the photo was none other than the taxi driver himself. The man didn't want to alert the driver, but every move he made was being watched. Just as the man was panicking, the driver calmly said, Don't be scared, I'm just borrowing my distant cousin's taxi to make some extra cash. He added, If I were a killer who stole the car, I would have ditched the vehicle and fled by now. But what the driver didn't realize was that the tattoo on his neck had become visible, making the man in the back seat even more uneasy. Then came the phone call that changed everything. Oh, where? Where are you? 거의 다 왔는데? 오늘 잡은 거 거래처에서 빨리 좀 달라는데요. 음, 알았어, 빨리 일 처리하고 갈게. The man suddenly noticed that the taxi had veered off the route to his home. When he asked, the driver nonchalantly replied, I just need to make a quick stop somewhere. Don't worry, I'll waive the extra fare. With that, he switched off the meter. As the car drove deeper into a remote area, the man's anxiety grew, his fingers nervously fiddling with the pen in his pocket. When the taxi finally stopped, the driver mentioned he needed to relieve himself and then walked into a nearby grove. All the while chatting on the phone, sensing danger, the man quietly followed, eavesdropping on the conversation from behind a bush. 
All he wanted was to escape, but as he tried to slip away, he tripped, making a noise that immediately caught the driver's attention. Seeing the man's panic, the driver smiled and said, It's pretty cold out here, you should get back in the car. With no other option, the man turned back toward the taxi, but the driver, noticing his hesitance, kept urging him to hurry up. Back in the car, the man couldn't hold back any longer and bluntly asked if the driver was involved in something shady. The driver chuckled and said, Since you're so curious, I'll tell you, driving a night shift taxi pays well, but I also dabble in second-hand trades to earn a bit more on the side. That was the final straw. The man's fear escalated, and he instinctively reached into his pocket for the pen. <laughs> In a swift, desperate move, he dragged the now lifeless driver out of the car, muttering to himself. This was self-defense. He climbed into the driver's seat, intending to flee in the taxi, but just as he thought he was in the clear, the wheels got stuck in the mud. No matter how hard he pressed the gas, the car wouldn't budge. Then, in the distance, he saw a van speeding toward him. Panic set in as he realized he might be in even deeper trouble. Thankfully, he spotted a text message on the driver's phone. It read, Looking forward to working together. Even though this is our first meeting, moments later, the van arrived, and two burly men with menacing looks stepped out. The man, trying to stay calm, got out of the taxi. When they questioned him, he slowly opened the car door and said, This guy wasn't cooperating, so I had to take care of him. But don't worry, everything's fresh. The two men exchanged a glance before turning their gaze back to him. But before anyone could say anything, a phone started ringing inside the car. Reluctantly, the man sat back in the driver's seat to answer the call. While he was on the phone, the two men opened the trunk. He told his wife that he had finally caught a taxi and was on his way home. His main goal was to get rid of the two men as quickly as possible. But when he walked to the back of the car, what he saw left him stunned a deer was lying in the trunk. The man exchanged a look with the two burly men. He knew his cover was blown, but he maintained his composure and helped them load the deer into their van. Suddenly, he felt someone's arm wrap around his neck from behind, but he was ready. He dug his thumbs into his assailant's eyes, forcing them to release their grip. Breaking free, the man bolted into the darkness, running for his life. The two burly men realized the man was nowhere to be found and shouted, If you don't come out, we're calling the cops. Just then, a figure emerged from the shadows, wielding a stick, and mercilessly attacked them until both men lay motionless on the ground. The man then doused the taxi in gasoline and lit his lighter. Only when the flames roared behind him did he calmly walk away from the scene. As a light drizzle began to fall, the exhausted man tried to flag down a passing car for a ride, but none of the vehicles stopped. Suddenly, a police car pulled up behind him, an officer stepped out and approached. The man insisted he was starving and had no place to go, but the officer still cuffed him and put him in the back of the squad car. During questioning, the man decided to come clean but maintained that he acted in self-defense. He recounted how, when he tried to leave the hotel, his flirtatious assistant had called his wife, threatening that he had to stay with her that night. So, in a fit of rage, the man used his pen to deal with the assistant who dared to challenge him. But when he grabbed her phone, he realized he had acted too impulsively. It turned out that she had only dialed a fake number to keep him there. The man then told the officer that the assistant and the taxi driver had conspired to frame him. The man kept trying to explain his innocence, but he soon realized the officer wasn't listening at all. 